Okay, so never do these things in math. What can I possibly be talking about here? Well, I'm talking about bad math habits, okay? And a lot of students out there don't even realize they have bad math habits. And these bad math habits really have a major impact on your ability to get the right answer on tests and quizzes. So if you're struggling in math, it's likely that you're doing some of these things. So I'm gonna highlight things not to do in mathematics. Okay, now some of this might seem like common sense, but it's, uh, I can guarantee you a lot of you out there are doing these things. So if you follow through, uh, and watch this video, okay, and then, you know, actually put some of this stuff in practice, uh, you're going to see your grades improve in mathematics. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, so uh, I know as a student and as a teacher, um, everything I'm telling you here is absolutely critical, okay? It's all based in experience, so it's not just stuff I'm making up. So you're going to want to stick around and really make sure that you're not doing any of these things. But uh, here's the deal. Over those years of teaching math, or uh, teaching math, I've come to the conclusion for sure that all students can be great in math, but you gotta be willing to work hard and you know not have these bad math habits, but put in the work, and then you need great math instruction. So that's where I can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, and you need assistance in mathematics, I'm gonna leave links uh, to all my math help uh, uh, programs in the description of this video. By the way, if you happen to be preparing for a test like the SAT, GED, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam, I can help you out along with if you need a homeschool math course, I can help you out. By the way, I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video as well. Okay, so let's get going here and talk about these things that you do not want to do. All right, so uh, we'll start right here. The first thing is do not use pen, okay? A lot of you like pen. I like to use pen, uh, but this is not a good idea. So uh, you need a piece of paper, obviously, to write um, mathematics. Get yourself a pencil, okay? Now, why would I be saying that? Because you're going to be doing a lot of erasing, okay? You're going to write something, you're going to be like, oh, that was a mistake. Uh, now, I know that there's erasable pen, but believe me, uh, in my experience, Erasable pen is really not that good. Get yourself a nice mechanical pencil, okay? Something you're comfortable with. Uh, get yourself some basic materials, right? Which is paper and pencil, all right? And it could be a number two pencil. I don't really care what type of pencil. Just make sure that you have the ability uh, to uh, erase and, um, you know, uh, have a nice clean start. You don't want to be throwing paper away. Nobody writes math perfectly like this. So, you know, oftentimes you'll be okay with that, but, you know, you're going to have to do a lot of erasing. So, again, get yourself a nice, decent pencil and get, get away from from using pen. Matter of fact, some math teachers out there, it's a requirement, you know, no pen allowed. Maybe at the university level, it might be a little bit different, but in most high schools and middle schools, uh, no pen. All right, the next thing is sloppy, okay? So are you sloppy? I tell you what, I was sloppy for many, many years. Uh, I wasn't neat, I wasn't that organized or whatnot. Um, so if you are sloppy, that might be kind of your natural way you write, all right? It's a bad habit, okay? You need to improve your neatness. So if you're sloppy, that is a bad habit. Now, I'm sure your sloppiness is carrying over to other subjects as well, like English and whatnot. So you're going to have to really work on being neater. So when it like comes to numbers, you know, just practice writing like one, two, three, four. You see here, I don't have any lines, but, you know, I'm really taking my time. You know, if I'm writing like 2x minus 3, I'm keeping all my kind of font level pitch, you know, the same size. You're being nice and neat. And you have to be very um, uh, purposeful when you're writing, uh, and, uh, you know, neat, okay? It's like it's a habit. You have to be focused and you have to be concentrating. But the more you do it, like anything else, the better off you're going to be, all right? I'm telling you right now, sloppy work. It, you can't see what you're doing, all right? You're like, I don't even know what, I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this. You'll write a bunch of stuff like this. You'll look at your paper and you'll be like, I don't even know what I wrote because I can't even understand my own work, right? And of course, if you can't understand it, there's no way your teacher is going to be able to understand it, be able to understand it. So if you're uh, sloppy, I'm telling you right now, it's causing you to have uh, problems getting the right solution. So improve of your neatness, and this is going to have a tremendous impact on your ability to do mathematics. All right, the next thing is uh, you're not showing each step, 
Okay, so let's just take a look at an example. Something like this. Let's say I had 2 times x minus 5 is equal to 3x minus 9. Something like that. And let's say you just uh, went oh, 2x is equal to 8, x is equal to 4. Let's say you just wrote your work this way. Well, there's a whole bunch of steps in here that you're not, um, you know, writing, okay? And most teachers, if you don't show the full work, this is the evidence uh, that you know what you're doing. They're like, okay, they did this step correctly. They did this right. You know, obviously you're uh, being nice and neat and organized. Boom, boom, boom. So a lot of you out there uh, want to save paper. You you want to do things, uh, mental math. You're kind of like, I don't need to write it. I could just, I know what's going on. I could just da, 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 da. Don't be a hero. You need to write out each things step by step by step. Okay. So get in the habit of not skipping steps. Show each step, write each step out. So don't try to go fast whatnot. not. This is critical, all right, that you uh, show each step, uh, not only for your ability to control the flow of the prom, but for your teacher to grade you and give you possibly uh, uh, partial credit if you get something wrong. But you're justifying your, your you know, uh, this is the evidence that you know how to, that you understand the concepts, you know how to solve the problem. All right, the next thing is, uh, and it's kind of related to this other step. You're not sh uh, showing each step, but let's suppose you do show each step, but you're not checking you your work as you go. Okay, so let's kind of go back to this problem here, and let me do this real quick. So let's say I went like this: two x minus five. That's an error. Three uh, x minus nine. Uh, so then I went. Uh, let's see here. I'm just making something up. Just stick uh, with me for one second. So I have minus 1x minus 5 is equal to negative 9. And then this would be pretty typical of what I might see in a classroom, something like this. Uh, so here is the answer. Okay. So let's suppose I'm grading this work right here. And I see a pretty good flow of work. I'm like, okay, this uh, person took this first step, which is the distributor property. Okay. Then they're uh, moving their variables over to the left-hand side. Then they move the numbers over to the right-hand side. It's not perfect work, but it's pretty good work, right? But look here, right? The first thing, there's an error. So this person went 2x, two, uh, 2 times x is 2x. This, is, this should be a 10, okay? This should be 2 times 5 is 10. They wrote a 5. So what you need to be doing as a math student is you need to stop... And when you write a, uh, a step in a problem, stop and then double check. Okay, we look at the step, look at what the you know, look at where, you, where the problem was at, and then look at this again. Look at the results. In other words, grade yourself as you go. Double check. So you say, okay, no, this is good. You know, take the time to just look at this again uh, and ensure that you took the right step. And then once you're satisfied, then take another step and then check that, okay? So grade yourself as you go. This is a huge thing that a lot of students don't do, and it's a bad math habit, okay? Uh, not checking your work as you go. You're just going, you're going like, yeah, I'm just going real quick, boom, 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 boom. Hey, look at me. I'm showing all the work, but you're not checking your work as you go. So get in the habit of checking your work as you solve a problem. Okay, so now let's talk about, like, test. Um, uh, test homework and whatnot, uh, and that is spending uh, too much time on one problem. So if you have like 20 problems to do, and you know you have a certain amount of time, don't get totally stuck on one problem. This is definitely a big no-no on a test or a quiz, uh, because if you get stuck on you know just trying to figure out one problem, there's five other problems you can do that can you know you can still have a good grade. So don't get too stuck on any particular problem. If you don't know how to do something, that's perfectly fine. Just make a mark and, you know, make sure you ask your teacher. Of course, if it's a test or quiz, you, you know, do what you can do. Don't leave it totally blank. Do whatever you can do, then, then move on. In other words, you're going to have to manage your time um, as you, um, you know, do, you know, uh, any quiz or test. And that's just kind of a general academic habit. Don't spend too much time on one problem, okay? But, you know, again, these are bad math habits. Students that are do, can do pretty well, they end up spending, you know, a disproportionate amount of time on things they can't do, where if they invest that time in problems they can do, they would do pretty uh, well. And here, 
is my last pet peeve. Definitely never, never, ever do this. Don't turn your test in early. Don't be that person, and I've seen this for years and years. Here is the classroom. Here is my desk, and here is the students. And I know the, the, uh, you know, the students here are pretty well, and I know that this student right here is like a top ma uh, math student. They're like, oh, they're always doing very, very well. And they finish a one-hour test in 30 minutes, and then they turn it in. Because once I have the test, once that test is turned in, you can't get that test back. That's it. So they do their, uh, they take their one hour test, they turn it in 30 minutes early, okay? Because maybe they wanna go ahead and uh, switch over and do homework from another class or look at their cell phone. No, they, they wouldn't, <laughs> they shouldn't have their cell phone on a test, but you get the idea. They wanna do something else and they're like, no, I totally, d -d 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 I'm super good at math, here you go. And then all these other students are like, oh my goodness, I can't believe that person's done. They are so smart. Listen, that's not smart, okay? Never turn your test in early. I used to take get these tests, you know, a lot of students that could do get an A, they rushed through the test, they were overconfident, okay? So guess what, um, what I saw, okay? They weren't taking the time, they were going so quick to double check in, in, uh, their work, and I saw errors. So students who should be getting A's on test end up with B's, uh, and they could easily have corrected these mistakes if they weren't rushing. So never turn your test in early. Take uh, the bulk of the time to review that test. So at least if you were able, if you're, for example, uh, if you were able to finish this test, you know, pretty satisfactory in say 30 minutes, take at least 15, 20 minutes, you know, use up the majority of the clock to double, triple check your work, okay? Because once that test gets turned in, that's it. So never, ever, turn in a test early, keep working that time, uh, keep reviewing and stay highly focused. But I can tell you right now, if you start doing these things, okay, you, you get yourself a good pencil, you become neater, you start writing out all your steps, you double check as you go, you kind of um, balance your time on tests and quizzes and homework, and you uh, stick with your test throughout the entire time for that test, you're going to skyrocket your grade, okay? Because uh, too many math students really are not uh, doing well in math, not because they are they don't understand the concepts, it's because they got these little bad habits. So hopefully this video helped you out, and if that is the case, consider helping me out by smashing that like button, and maybe even subscribing to my YouTube channel. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have over a thousand plus math videos from basic math to advanced math, like calculus and everything in between. So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of my uh, videos. I make them for you, but my best math help will always be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.